This is the 75 to 300 mm lens. Over the past few years, I've been using this lens for deep sky ash photography, and in this video, I would like to share my experience with you. All that and everything right after the intro. This video is not sponsored and not being paid for it. All products shown in this video were purchased by myself, but now I would like to start. So this is the 75 to 300 mm lens. You can use this lens at a focal length between 75 up to 300 mm. And over the few years I have captured a lot of deep sky astrophotography images with this kind of lens. And in this video I would like to sh show you a few of these images and I would like to talk about whether this lens is indeed good for astrophotography. I think the, be the best way to show whether a lens is good for astrophotography is by showing images I was able to achieve. Therefore, I would like to show you a few images I captured with this lens. As I already mentioned, you can use this lens uh, at a focal length between 75 up to 300 millimeters. So this is a great range of focal length for deep sky astrophotography. So on the one hand, you can use this lens at a focal length of 75 millimeters for wide field astrophotography, but on the other hand, you can use this lens at a focal length of 300 millimeters for a little bit more magnification, such as for objects like smaller galaxies or nebulae. So you can photograph a lot of objects with this kind of lens. So you can, for example, photograph the great Andromeda galaxy, you can photograph the Orion constellation, even a wide field image, with 75 millimeters, so this is what I did a few years ago. So my very first image um, I created with this kind of lens, so with this 75 to 300 millimeter lens and uh, my Canon EOS 2000D. So the image you can currently see um, is my very first image I captured uh, in deep sky astrophotography. So the image you are currently seeing is a wide field image of the Orion constellation. So you can see the Orion Nebula and the horse head as well as the flame nebula. So this is the very first image I captured in deep sky astrophotography. The equipment I used is rather easy. So I just used uh, my Canon EOS 2000D, this 75 to 300 millimeter lens and a tripod. So normally, so as you already know, Earth is rotating and therefore we astrophotographers usually use a tracking mount. But back, back then I had no tracking. So I tried to do astrophotography without tracking, so just used a single tripod. And as you know, Earth is rotating, and therefore we usually need a, a, a tracking mount. But if you take the exposure time very, very short, you can even do astrophotography without tracking. So this is what I did a few years ago. In order to not have star trails in our final image, we have to use a rather shorter exposure time. So in this case, I used a single exposure time of two seconds. Then I captured a lot of light frames and combined them later to achieve a total exposure time of approximately 30 minutes. So the image you're currently seeing has a total exposure time of approximately 30 minutes. So this definitely shows that astrophotography can be done in an affordable way as well. And you can even achieve great results with this kind of lens even without tracking. So if you want to start into astrophotography, but you don't want to invest that much money, you can buy this lens and a normal DSLR camera and tripod and you can even achieve great results with this kind of setup. Approximately a year ago, I used this kind of lens once again, but this time on a tracking mount. To be more precise, I used the HEQ5 Pro. This allows me to take single images with a longer exposure time, to, which allows me to reveal even more details. Therefore, I've planned to photograph the exact same framing, so the Orion constellation, once again, but this time I would like to photograph the Orion constellation with the 75 to 300 millimeter lens with the Canon EOS 2000D, but this time not with a tripod, but with a HEQ5 Pro go-to mount. In this case, I was able to capture this image. So you can see the Orion Nebula, the Horset Nebula, and the Flame Nebula. But this time I had an exposure time of approximately six hours. Therefore, I was able to reveal even more details. And you can see that there are a lot of details in this kind of image. So you can see that this lens is actually great for deep sky astrophotography. Just a tip for you guys. So you can use this lens at a focal ratio of approximately f4, but then you will get a lot of halos around your stars in order to get better images, better, better star quality. I would recommend using f5.6 or f7.1, so something in that range to get better stars and better image quality. So the very first image I captured of the Orion constellation, which was the very first image I um, showed you a few minutes ago. Um, in this case, I used a focal ratio. I used f. Um, 4.0 and you can see that there are a lot of halos around the stars so the star quality as well as the, the image quality is not that good. And in this case I used um, an 
I used F7.1 and you can see that the stars are much better and the star quality is actually great. I mean the disadvantage is that less light reaches your sensor and therefore you need to collect even more exposure time to reveal the same details in your final image. But definitely you can achieve great results when using, when, when using this lens at f5.6 up to f7.1. So if you would like to get into deep sky astrophotography, this lens is actually great. So these are some kind of two images I captured with this kind of lens. So if you have any further questions about this lens, if, or if you have any ideas what I should capture, feel free to write these questions down below in the comments. I'm very happy to help you. If you have any questions in general about deep sky astrophotography or any more detailed questions about this lens, feel free to ask me and I'm going to help you. If you are interested in more pictures I captured with this lens, feel free to write that down below in the comments and then I'm going to do another video about this kind of lens in which I show you a few other images I captured with this lens. So approximately a half a year ago I captured a few other images with this kind of lens, so if you're interested in that feel free to write that down below in the comments. So the images I was able to achieve are actually fantastic. So if you're inter interested in it, feel free to write that down below in the comments. So as I've mentioned, if you have any further questions, feel free to ask me and I'm going to help you. If you found that guide helpful and I was able to help you, I would really appreciate a like and a subscription. Otherwise, thank you so, so much for watching and, and until next time. Clear skies, Felix.